Well friends, we have been waiting for this too long and this day has officially come. The regulators have seized the stable coins with this jungle hold. BUSD has become the anti-hero of the crypto market in the recent days and again, the CEC is to blame. Binance has already signed a death warrant for their stablecoin, which does not bode well for the market. In this situation, the only correct question would be what the hell to do? And for this, my friend, today's video exists. So stay with me until the end and find out all the pros and cons of stablecoins, what is the best stable up to this date, and also how to avoid the ubiquitous regulators. So enjoy watching. The cryptocurrency market, yes, can be pretty wild with prices going up and down all the time. So to make it easier for people to use and hold their money, stablecoins were created. So stablecoins are a special kind of cryptocurrencies that are tied to a specific fiat currency or asset. This means their value stays pretty steady. So you don't have to worry about the wild price swings of other cryptos. For example, some stablecoins are tied to the US dollar or the euro or even gold. There are two types of stablecoins, centralized and decentralized. Centralized stablecoins are made and controlled by a central group like a company or bank. And some examples are USDT, USDC and BUSD. But decentralized stablecoins, on the other hand, are made and managed by a computer program that runs on a special kind of database called blockchain. They are designed to be more transparent and secure and they are managed by people who use them. Some examples of decentralized stablecoins are DAI and USDD. So stablecoins are a great way to use cryptocurrency without worrying about wild price swings. Okay, so let's move to exact names, starting with USDT. The most popular stablecoin at this moment is Tether USDT. It was launched in 2014 by Tether Limited and actually was initially called Realcoin but was later renamed Tether in November of the same year. Actually, we have already made a video about the dirty side of Tether. This info is essential, so make sure to check it out. iPhoenix Inc. is the parent company of Tether Limited and Bitfinex, one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges in the world. The company is registered in Hong Kong. iPhoenix Inc. and its subsidiaries have faced criticism in the past. So claims have been made that Bitfinex and Tether were used to manipulate the cryptocurrency market. In addition, some critics have expressed concerns about the transparency and accounting practices of Tether Limited. The size of its dollar reserves and the manipulation of cryptocurrency prices, of course. In 2019, it was revealed that the New York Attorney General's office was investigating the activities of iPhoenix Inc or possible fraud. The investigation focused on whether Bitfinex and Tether had concealed losses of nearly $850 million. For many years, there have been many allegations of shady activities and lack of transparency in Tether's management and reserves, as the company has not been audited by specialized organizations. However, according to the latest reports, Tether Limited has no problems with reserves and liquidity. Well, in fact, nearly 82% of its assets are held in cash, US Treasury bills, bank deposits, and other secure investments. Another nearly 5% of assets are held in corporate bonds, funds, and precious metals. Plus, 9% are secure loans, and nearly 4% are invested in other assets such as cryptocurrency tokens. So you might be wondering why Tether Limited and other stablecoin issuers don't just hold all their funds in dollars. Well, they function like crypto banks, accepting fiat money from users and using it to generate profits. Currently, USDT has a market capitalization of nearly $70 billion. Just what a number. Since its creation, USDT has been very stable with only one significant dip in price to 0.91 cents. This occurred on April 25, 
2017 when Bitfinex lost its bank. However, they passed a security audit by Ledger Labs and the price returned to its $1 value. Although USDT is super stable these days, it's important to note that still, there are tiny risks associated with holding USDT. So this might include ongoing legal issues with iPhoenix Inc, freezing of users' wallets, liquidity problems, or the bankruptcy of the issuer company. So each could result in an untethering of the coins. In 2018, the Central Consortium, which is owned by Circle, a stablecoin issuer, and also Coinbase, which is a leading US exchange, created USDC, so USD coin. It was intended as an alternative to Tether, which at that time faced growing attention due to a lack of transparency in the company and its reserves. So USDC aims to be fully transparent and regularly audited. One significant advantage of USDC over USDT is that while USDT is registered in Hong Kong and has been involved in scandals, shadow games, and manipulations, USDC is based in the US and has not been involved in any scandals ever since. Well, even Coinbase trades on the NASDAQ, which requires a thorough examination to be listed. And yeah, similarly, Circle also undergoes regular audits of its reserves by the reputable American firm, Grant Thornton. Unlike Tether, Circle holds only two types of assets in its reserves. Nearly 28% in cash deposits in the US banks and nearly 72% in short terms US Treasury bills. Currently, the market cap of USDC is $42 billion and it peaked at $55 billion. Until recently, USDC could only be used in a few networks, but Circle has partnered with Layer Zero, allowing USDC to be bridged into 59 networks. So since 2020, the price of USDC has been very stable with no significant fluctuations. So the risks of holding USDC are pretty much the same, including wallet freezing, liquidity problems, and the issuer's bankruptcy. BUSD or Binance USD was launched later in September 2019 by Binance in partnership with Paxos Trust Company, a regulated financial institution. So the goal of creating BUSD was to provide users with a stablecoin that is pegged to the value of the US dollar and can be used for trading and transactions on the Binance platform. BUSD is pretty similar to USDC and is normally owned by two companies, Binance and Paxos Trust Company, as I said before. Paxos Trust Company is a trust company, obviously registered in New York in operating under the supervision of the New York State Department of Financial Services. The reserves of Paxos are audited by Withem, one of the largest public accounting firms in the US. Paxos reserves are composed of two types of assets. 98% are in government guaranteed debt instruments, which is US Treasury bonds, and nearly 2% are in cash deposits in US banks. Currently, the market cap of BUSD is $13 billion, having peaked at $23 billion. Since 2020, the price of BUSD has been very stable with no significant deviations. Well, until recently, when the CEC went to war against Paxos. Actually, it might be a planned attack on Binance, because, you know, it has skeletons in the closet too. So make sure to check our previous video and find out what CZ hides. So the risks associated with holding BUSD include wallet freezing, liquidity issues, and the bankruptcy of the issuer company. Well, I would say it's just safer to stay away from BUSD for a while because the situation with BUSD is still unclear and it's time if it might come to an end. So. We'll see how that turns out. Okay, so these are the top three centralized stablecoins up to this date. Well, in my opinion, USDC is the better choice in terms of transparency, while USDT still remains the first choice for many. But 
With BUSD, things are complicated and may only get worse over time. However, regulations can change the whole industry in the foreseeable future. So we all should watch it closely. And now let's move on to decentralized stablecoins. DAI is a decentralized stablecoin created in 2017 by the decentralized autonomous organization MakerDAO on the Ethereum blockchain. Unlike centralized stablecoins, which are backed by real assets like dollar or other financial instruments, DAI is backed by other cryptocurrencies and operates on lending in over-collateralization algorithm. So to obtain 1000 DAI, you must pledge at least 1000 and a half worth of ETH as collateral. This means that one DAI is backed by one and a half dollar worth of ETH. If the price of Ether drops and your balance falls below $1400 worth of Ether, this smart contract will automatically sell all of your Ether and return the difference to you with a 13% penalty fee. This is done to maintain the collateralization level of DAI and keep its price at $1. Once DAI is returned, the collateral is released back to the user. At present, each issued DAI is backed by a number of tokens and coins, which you can see right over here. So the total capitalization level is 140-41%, which is actually less than 150 due to the large number of other stable coins used in the collateral. The DAI mechanism works like a regular loan, where you provide collateral and then borrow. But in this case, the collateral must be in volatile assets like Ethereum, BTC and other coins, and also must be at least 150% with higher collateral being better. So with good collateralization of more than 200%, if your assets drop in price, your position will not be liquidated immediately, as would be the case for 150% collateralization. The current market capitalization of DAI is $5.2 billion, with a peak of $10.5 billion. Due to its collateralization mechanism, DAI is slightly more volatile than centralized stablecoins, with its minimum price being 0.77 cents in January 2018. However, since 2020, there have been no significant deviations from its peg. Risks associated with holding DAI include the fact that DAI is nearly 40% collateralized with USDC, so any issues with USDC could significantly affect the value of DAI. So DAI is more volatile than centralized stablecoins, and there is a risk of losing the peg due to the sudden changes in the price of collateral assets or errors in smart contracts. You see, DAI is conditionally decentralized, as all decisions are made by DAO, meaning that the more MKR tokens held by interested party, the more they will influence the voting outcome. FRAX is a decentralized and synthetic stablecoin created in 2020 and based on the Aave DeFi protocol, which is one of the first decentralized lending platforms in the market. The FRAX protocol can maintain price stability using two main mechanisms, the FRAX stablecoin and its governance token, FRAX share, which is FXS. As a fractionally collateralized stablecoin, FRAX is minted using both FXS and USDC. It is currently collateralized by USDC and its collateralization ratio depends on the market price of FRAX. So the market says the collateralization ratio or CR. So when the price of FRAX is $1.01, the CR decreases. But when the price of FRAX is 99 cents, the CR increases. The ratio of collateralized and uncollateralized FRAX is determined by market forces. So the risks of holding FRAX are the following. Smart contract hacks in FRAX or the coins it pairs with, leading to uncollateralized FRAX just flooding the market. The incomplete collateralization of FRAX increases its efficiency, but also increases the risks of detachment from the pack. So next is, or was, 
UST or Terra USD, which was algorithmic stablecoin in the Terra ecosystem that wasn't backed by reliable assets and ultimately failed. But we'll get to that point in a moment. Its pack to the dollar was achieved through the burning of the second coin in the ecosystem, Luna. This meant that people who wanted to get UST had to give up Luna tokens worth one dollar, and those who wanted to redeem UST could give one UST and receive one dollar's worth of Luna. As a result, when UST became untethered from its one dollar price, many arbitragers took advantage of the price differences, bringing to UST price back to $1. So Terra was a fairly large blockchain ecosystem, where UST and Luna were both among the top 10 coins by market capitalization, with combined market cap of over $40 billion. Well, until May 2022. The ecosystem and the stablecoin UST gained such popularity mainly because of the Anchor protocol. This project offered 90% annual interest on the staked UST, attracting more and more people to buy UST and invest it in Anchor, thereby just inflating the ecosystem's bubble. The main problem with Terra was that the entire project turned out to be a pyramid scheme. In the end, due to the massive liquidity outflow from the ecosystem, well, panic began and the UST price support algorithm stopped working. Well, it is because the number of arbitragers was lower than the number of people who wanted to sell both UST and Luna. So the price of Luna just plummeted from $90 to $0.01. So like 99% loss in just a week. Such a drop occurred not only because people wanted to get rid of their coins, but also because the Terra team wanted to save their stablecoin and began mass emitting new Luna coins to keep their price. But as we can see, this didn't work. At present, the price of the stablecoin UST is $0.031. And the final one, USDD, is an algorithmic stablecoin on the Tron network launched in May, just a few days before the UST crash. Its mechanism of pegging to the US dollar is called PCM, or Peg Stability Module. So this mechanism works in such a way that anyone can exchange one USDD for one USDT, USDC, TUSD or USDG and vice versa without any fees or slippage which should keep its value around $1. In addition to this mechanism, USDD has an over collateralization of 170% in TRX, BTC, USDT and USDC. Well, USDD could face a similar fate to UST because it follows Terra's strategy and offers high staking percentages for its stablecoin. Besides, it is only listed on Huobi, which is the exchange created by Justin Sun, who is actually the creator of USDD. That is another reason to be cautious. So what I'm saying, just be careful with USDD. Okay, so what conclusion can we draw from decentralized stablecoins? Well, they aren't so stable but truly yours. I would prefer to deal with DAI and avoid scams like USD. Currently, centralized stablecoins make up almost 90% of the market cap, but the FTX crash has spiked a trend towards decentralization. This should be interesting. However, stablecoins are not the only crypto under this siege, and many coins may disappear soon. So watch our previous video to learn why and who will survive. Also, we're about to roll out super useful videos about altcoins that will make like 10 or 1000 X soon. So write in the comments what interests you the most, whether it's DeFi ecosystem or GameFi, and we'll include some gems based on your ideas. As always, thanks for watching and see you soon.